As a program officer, I kind of manage, support and monitor grants in uh, AP, Karnataka, Manipur and Nagaland right now. To be very honest, uh, this is a program which was conceptualized by our uh, grantee or our partner HLF PPT. Um, our focus as a donor or a funder is to kind of think long term and partner strategically with the government and through partners like HLF PPT and many others in you know the six highest prevalent states in India, our focus in the first 10 years was to have a model in place where we are able to work with the most affected communities, the most vulnerable communities uh, in very specific geographies and um, the main focus was to reduce HIV prevalence in these six states but somewhere down the line we realized that you know uh, unless we take the community along and make the entire process community led, genuine community led the program is not sustainable the funding stops the program ends right so even though the government has a very strong implementation focus um, getting the communities to own the process was very important so like I mentioned earlier that you know we have created very strong community structures, informal groups, networks, uh, formal registered community-based organizations which actually run programs now. Through these CBOs, other than focusing on HIV prevention implementation, over the course of the 10 years, they have realized that unless you address the unmet social needs, which includes focusing on the needs of the children of the sex workers, you're not addressing the entire problem. So for a very simple example is that if you talk to any sex worker in our program, she will tell you, at least 9 out of 10, 10 of the women will tell you that they don't want their daughters to get into sex work. right? So that is a very positive, heartening kind of a development. And um, second is that, you know, unless we create awareness in the general public about the difficulties faced by the vulnerable communities, we are not addressing the issue of stigma and discrimination. So things are changing for the better. I think earlier the kind of issues, uh, you know, these communities would face when they went to a government health facility or even, you know, accessing any kind of a, you know, social entitlement there that they are legitimately you know, allowed to access, uh, they used to face a lot of stigma and discrimination. I'm not saying that it has gone away completely, but it has come down significantly, which is why, you know, doing programs like this, Friends Forever, is very, very important because one is to look at, you know, addressing the adult population. But the entire belief that, you know, HLF PPT came to us with was that why not the children? Because in terms of a long-term kind of awareness building, unless you work with the children, again, it will not sustain. So if, take the example of any family. Today, children are so sharp. Uh, they are so well aware, thanks to the internet and television, etc., that they become they are almost like parents to their parents, right? So they are much more open-minded, they are broad-minded, uh, they have a strong point of view, they are socially conscious, right? Which is why we thought, you know, building awareness among the children is a very sure shot way of ensuring that, you know, all this education, knowledge, awareness building is internalized because kids absorb it very well. And down the line, you may not see the impact immediately. What we are trying to do through brand ambassadors like Vivius Lakshman, it will take time. Maybe in the next three years, in the five years, years is when you'll actually start seeing impact but it's an investment worth making so which is why we are kind of saying yes and supporting our partner like HLF PPT see again it's not in the ambit of what we do as a foundation or what HLF PPT does see that's where you know the role of the community based organization becomes very very important see earlier whether it's a government run program or a donor funded program through an NGO when you try to kind of counsel and try to build confidence it makes a difference but at a very superficial level but the minute you start you know involving the community where somebody from the community a sex worker herself becomes a peer educator right and the CBO has formal committees right uh, so you have a committee which looks at services like you know condom services or uh, treatment health seeking services like STI services uh, then you have advocacy committees which are entirely run by the community so the change that we are seeing is that you know once the community leaders are you, there are a lot of leaders in the audience today, they take on the responsibility of counselling. So even before counselling, the first step is to know what the issues are. right? So as a donor or as a government or even an NGO, you are very well-meaning. right? Your intent is very good, but you are not able to get down to the day-to-day -day issues 
that faces a sex worker. Whereas a CBO leader, because she herself is a sex worker, she knows exactly, she knows the pulse of the community. So the first step is to know the pulse, right? Second step is to identify what is the issue. Is it a violence issue? Uh, is it some something to do with, you know, not being able to save the money that a sex worker earns? Or is it as fundamental as, you know, if, if I'm a HIV positive sex worker, how do I disclose my status, right? How do I ac access treatment? Will I be able to continue living? There, there are so many doubts in the mind of a HIV uh, infected person that, you know, he or she feels comfortable talking to a fellow community person. Then counselling comes at a much later stage and by now I think we have good systems in place where issues are identified proactively. The community themselves you know take on the responsibility of counselling. So I don't know whether I've answered your question. One is having formal counselling systems from a health standpoint that the government already has. Right. So if you walk into a HIV testing what we call as ICTC centre, you have a formal counselling, pre-counselling, post-counselling, after testing also. Right. But those are on the prevention and the treatment side. Whereas a lot of counselling that needs to be done on a day-to-day -day basis that a sex worker faces, the CBOs are taking on that responsibility increasingly. See, again, may not be through our program specifically, but again, if you look at what the National AIDS Control Program is trying to do, at the national level you have NACO, and again at a state level you have the state's aid AIDS control societies. I think the government has done a very good job in terms of building awareness as far as general public is concerned. So in the last couple of years, you know, you would have seen a lot of these what we call as IEC campaigns, whether it is print media or television media or many other forms of media, it has really stepped up. So people no longer feel shy talking about, you know, sexually transmitted infections. They know that they can walk into a government hospital and get an STI treated, right? And people are no longer afraid saying that, you know, should I get myself tested for it, HIV. It has become a part of the system now. So even as a normal person, if I go for my annual medical checkup, HIV test is, it has become a part of, you know, what needs to be done. So to answer your question, I don't think our program does that in a very direct way, but we support the government, right? And indirectly through the communities we work with, the NGOs and CBOs, they take on a lot of responsibility of like, you know, earning the respect of the general public, saying that, you know, it could be you and me, right? Nobody comes written on the forehead saying that I'm a sex worker or I'm an MSM or an IDU. It could be anybody sitting in this room. But you'd earn respect for yourself as a community when you start delivering on the prevention agenda, which I think, at least I would like to believe that, you know, our communities have earned that credibility. So one is for the government to build awareness directly. But our communities and our programs build awareness in a more indirect fashion, but equally impactful, equally impactful.